In this video, we are going to be covering eight of the most unappreciated watches in the world. Welcome back to the Chisholm Hunter channel. My name is Harrison, as always. And before we start this video, if you could do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so everyone's heard of the, the Rolex Submariner. Everyone's heard of the AP Royal Oak. Everyone's heard of the Patek Philippe Nautilus. But what about those watches that are just a little bit underrepresented, not talked about enough? That's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the Amiga Aquaterra World Timer. So let's just cover what the World Timer actually does, what the functionality is before we get into the specs and which one I think is just so underappreciated. A World Timer is a pretty complicated timepiece that can display the time in multiple time zones simultaneously. And that's why when you look at the dial on the World Timer, you can see a bunch of different stuff going on. It is quite a overbearing, dial, but it has to be that way to fit those complications. The World Timer comes in at 43 millimeters in diameter and comes in at 14.1 millimeters in thickness. It also measures 50 millimeters lug to lug. And yes, this is a little bit thicker for a, a more dressy sports slash watch, if you want to call it that. But remember that they're cramming so many complications into this model. So the most attractive thing about this dial has to be the, the, the earth in the middle. Everything about it screams travel. And as a photographer and videographer that's, that's made my career through traveling, I love that. Now they've actually laser engraved the, the, the map or the world on to a grade five titanium surface. And when you know that and you look at it, you can really see the kind of sheens and flakes of, of titanium uh, colors coming through there. This model in particular actually features a rubber strap with a titanium buckle. Now that rubber strap has a texture all over it and it definitely feels like one of the more premium Amiga rubber straps. The movement in this watch is phenomenal. I mean, it has to be, it's an Amiga. The movement is the Caliber Amiga 8938. It's a self-winding movement with a quote actual escapement, certified by Master Chronometer, approved, of course, being an Amiga, by Metas, and resistant to magnetic fields reaching 15,000 Gauss. Moving quickly on to number two, we get to the Rolex Cellini. Now, everyone knows about the Rolex Submariner, the Rolex Daytona, the Rolex Air King, the Rolex Explorer, but not many people talk about the Rolex Cellini. I don't know why, because it's pretty nice. These models historically were only crafted from either solid gold or platinum. They all come in at 39 millimeters and they either come in 18 karat white gold or ever rose gold, which is patented by Rolex. They have sapphire crystal, fluted case backs, leather straps with 18 karat white gold or ever rose gold buckles. And again, that plays more into that dressy category. They have automatic movements, which are chronometer certified with 48 hours of power. And they also go to 50 meters of water resistance. These models are absolutely incredible for dress watches. And it's weird, everyone talks about Rolex. It's, it's the biggest brand in the world, right? but nobody seems to recognize this model for what it is. And it is a key piece in Rolex's history. Next up, we have a field watch from Rolex's baby brother. We have a field watch, or technically a field watch, from Tudor. The Tudor Ranger is the next watch that we're going to talk about, and this was released in 2022, and it definitely fit the more field watch category. Now, everyone talks about the Tudor Black Bay. Everyone talks about the Tudor Black Bay Chrono, especially the Pink Panther nowadays, but not many people remember the Tudor Ranger. The Tudor Rangers come in at 39 millimeters and you do have various strap options to choose between. You have a NATO strap, you have a leather strap, and you also have a bracelet. Now for a, a more expedition-y kind of model, for a more, a more fueled model, I would go with the NATO, but also the bracelet is good. These watches come in at 39 millimeters in diameter, have a case thickness of 12 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. They have a power reserve of 70 hours and this is made possible by the manufacturer caliber MT5402, which of course is COSC certified. And this is a fully automatic movement. It's waterproof to 100 meters and of course has sapphire crystal glass. On the tip of the second hand on this watch, you can see it has that splash of red, which pops out beautifully against the black dial. This watch is very stripped back. It is very simple, but I think in simplicity lies the genius of watchmaking. I mean, look at the new Aquaterra a black dial that was released. Everyone went mental about that, including myself. It's brilliant. 
because it's so simple. What's not to love? And that's why I was kind of confused about the Tudor Ranger. I thought it would just be bigger than it, than, than it kind of is now. People seem to just not be talking about it as much. Next up, we have the IWC Spitfire. Now this watch hasn't been the primary focus of IWC in the last three years. They've been more focused on their big pilot and their engineer. And that's the, that's the two watches that are kind of taking IWC to the forefront of people's minds. But when it comes to wearability, when it comes to a more fueled everyday wearer watch, the Spitfire works. I mean, the big pilot, in my opinion, the crown's that little bit too chunky for an everyday wearer. The IWC engineer is that little bit too expensive for an everyday wearer. So the Spitfire fits kind of perfectly in that category. Now you do have a ton of variations of this watch to choose between, but let's talk about the bronze for a minute because something that I love about bronze is the fact that it patinas over time. And through a patina, you get your own look. No patinas can look the same and it just gives a really vintage, unique coloration to your watch. The bronze Spitfire model comes in at 39 millimeters in diameter and 10.6 millimeters in height. It's water resistant to 60 meters and it has the caliber 32110 movement, which is an IWC manufactured movement with 72 hours of power, 163 components and 21 joules. It does have a brown calfskin strap which kind of matches the green, the kind of dark green aesthetic of that dial nicely. But if it was me, again, I'd probably get a NATO on there. I've just never been a fan of leather straps. They seem to sit on the bone really, really weirdly. And I've just never been a fan of them. Let me know what you guys think about leather straps because I'm not sure if that's just a me thing, if I'm wearing it wrong or other people have this issue. I am quite a skinny guy and I do have 6.5 inch wrists. And on the subject of my wrist, it's time for a wrist check. What is on your wrist today? Please let me know in the comments. It's time for the Chisholm Hunter tradition, which of course is the wrist check, which I just, I just said. I've got the Amiga Seamaster on. Let me know in the comments. Next on the list at number five, we have the Glass Hootie Original CQ, a banging watch that I try and feature in as many videos as I can because it's just so underrated. And something that not many people know about uh, glass hoot watches is that they actually produce 95% of their movements in-house. Now to produce all pretty much your movement in-house, that's no mean feat. Now you do get a price with that because it is expensive, but it's just an awesome thing to know. And also the fact that the Glass Hootie original logo with the two Gs, what it actually signifies is one G looking into the past and one G looking into the future. It's taking the best from the past and innovating for the future. Hence what they've done with the CQ. The 39.5 mil comes in stainless steel, but you can opt for a gold version if that's what you want to do. It comes in at 12.15 millimeters in height and it's waterproof to 200 meters. The movement in this specific model is the caliber 39-11. And this is a fully automatic movement with 40 hours of power, beating a frequency of 28,800 VPH. And these movements, when you look at them through the open case back, actually scrap that, any Glass Hootie original movement that you look at through the open case back, it just has such a degree of encapsulation about it. You are fixated with it because of how beautiful and handcrafted they are. Next up, we have the Zenith El Primero. And yes, I know what you guys are going to, to think, you guys are going to say, did Rolex Daytonas not used to use El Primero movements? And the answer is, yes, they did. Yes, they did. And actually, interesting fact, there's a lot of people on this channel that say that Rolex uh, are copied by a ton of brands, including Zenith with their Chronomaster Sport. But when you look back through the history books, the Zenith Chronomaster Sport, or not the Chronomaster Sport at that time, it was the El Primero, actually came first. And it was remarkably similar to the Rolex Daytona. Now each brand has their own DNA and their own uh, styles, aesthetics. So you can pick, but I don't think it's right to say that Zenith copied Rolex when Zenith were first to the scene. There's been tons of iterations of the El Primero movement. It's been used across the watch industry by everybody, including Rolex. And specifically, they released quite recently, actually, the Chronomaster Sport. And I believe that this is such an underrated watch. Such an underrated watch. This Chronomaster comes in a couple of different color variations that you can choose between. My favorite being the white. Now these do come in at 41 millimeters in diameter. They come in stainless steel, if that's the model that you opt to go for. And also they have the, the colored sub dials on the dial itself, which adds so much flair, so much personality, and it's very zenith. 
The movement in these models is of course the El Primero and it has 311 components, beats it at a frequency of 36,000 VPH and it has approximately 60 hours of power. When you pair the white dial with the black bezel with a black rubber strap, honestly, this is the, one of the sexiest watches I've ever seen on the wrist. It's honestly just beautiful. Now, previously, I think I had it with a blue rubber strap, which doesn't go as well. It doesn't fit the vibe as well, but with the black rubber strap, French kiss. Honestly, underappreciated watch. It's just banging. Hamilton is a is a brand that you'll probably hear a lot about on this channel because I'm a huge Hamilton fan. I love the the branding that they're going with. I love the affordability, but they've kind of got put in a box recently in the field watch category. They've kind of uh, gone so headfirst into that category that people forget that they do diving watches. So that's what we're talking about today. The underappreciated Hamilton khaki scuba or the Hamilton khaki navy scuba. There's tons of variations that come under that kind of family. The khaki navy scuba comes in a variety of, of, of different variations. Specifically, the one that I've filmed most recently is the khaki navy scuba uh, coming in three different color variations. You have a yellow, you have a pink, and you have an orange. Now these are very summery watches, very summer vibey watches, but you remove the yellow strap and put something black or dark there, all of a sudden you have an everyday wearer and it's a good everyday wearer at that. The case diameter of these watches comes in at 40 millimeters. That's specifically the Khaki Navy Scuba. The thickness comes in at 12.95 millimeters and they of course come in stainless steel. The movement in this model is the H10 and it has 80 hours of power and it's water resistant to 100 meters. Up next, we have probably one of the, probably one of my favorite watches that I'm gonna cover in this video. It, it honestly, I was so upset when this got discontinued. It is the Amiga CK859. This model comes in at 39 millimeters in diameter, 11.7 millimeters in thickness, and its lug to lug comes in at 46.2 millimeters. This watch to me is the perfect dress watch, literally perfect. I wouldn't even complain about the leather strap on this model because it's just absolutely gorgeous. It looks stunning. Those blue hands against that silver dial, and the, and the dial actually is silver. It's made of 925 silver, which is just unbelievable. And you can really tell when looking at this watch that it is. It also has a small seconds counter at six o'clock mark, which makes it really, really symmetrical. It just looks so, so beautiful. I'm, I was honestly obsessed with this watch for a very long time, and I made a video claiming how obsessed with this watch I was. This watch is manual winding, but there's something about manual winding watches that make them more dressy to me, more classic to me, more longer lasting to me. And, and, and I love the, the prospect of a manual winding watch. Now, since the CK was discontinued, they've actually released another CK for the Paris 2024 Olympic Games. This model is the CK859 in bronze gold. So essentially what they've done in the case of this watch or on the watch itself is combined bronze, silver, and gold. And this is because the Olympic games, you've got bronze, silver, and gold. So they're trying to incorporate that into the body of this watch. It's very, very similar to the, the, the other version, apart from it actually has an Olympic games logo stamped on the back of this watch, which is great. And I love the fact that they're celebrating the Olympic games. However, I would love to see this watch as a normal production line because of how bloody sexy it is. I mean, just look at this, look at it. And that is all from me today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please consider hitting that subscribe button or follow our podcast at Into The Mind. That's the Into The Mind podcast or our Instagram at Chisholm Hunter Watches or my Instagram at HP Lifelines. And that's all the plugs that I can think of. I'll see you soon.